My name is Kyoko Kirigiri. A few weeks ago, I was just an ordinary student at Hope's Peak Academy. Of course, nothing at Hope's Peak is truly ordinary. In this case, this once prestigious institution turned out to be a horrible death trap run by a maniacal, mechanical bear, Monokuma. However, now the situation has changed. By some strange booking, my classmates and I have been whisked away to the world of professional wrestling. Yet, even here in the WWE, we cannot escape the claws of that wicked bear. Monokuma has taken over Monday Night Raw, forcing us into a 24-7 live televised wrestling show of despair. We've once again found ourselves trapped in another brutal killing game, and now we share this horrible fate with the superstars of the WWE. During our time here, my classmates and I have overcome a number of odd challenges and strange angles involving hostile superstars, and even ghosts. The WWE superstars haven't had it easy either. John Cena was forced to break kayfabe and face a part of himself he had hidden deep in his heart. I am John Cena, and I love anime! Unlocking a mighty power within. My new friend, Cody Rhodes, has also discovered another side to himself with a strange new gimmick. I am... conflicted about that. The greatest tragedy has been the death of our friend and classmate, Junko Enoshima. Her carelessness in this world of sports entertainment led to her untimely demise. Which brings us to now. By the rules of Monokuma's game, we must uncover the mystery of Jinko's murder, or face death ourselves. Our investigation has led us to some unfortunate conclusions. But we must face this despair head on if we have any hope to survive. I'm sorry, Cody. This is it. The main event. It's life or death. I walk down the steel ramp and see the squared circle. Hope versus despair, scheduled for one fall. A deadly judgment, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal, a deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly fate, a deadly class trial. with an explanation of the class trial. If you can figure out who done it, then only the blackened will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Graduate? But I'm the best at wrestling. Oh, graduate is just a term I'm used to. This is a class trial, after all. Okay, but can we use a term that's a little more appropriate for our current setting? Fine, fine! If the Blackened gets away, they'll become Dangan Wrestling Champion! Ooh, that title is as good as mine! The Champ is here! You know winning that title means you're the killer, right? Oh, I didn't kill anyone. My heel turn is yet to come. So the odds of your becoming champion are pretty slim. I will overcome the odds. He always does. Why am I even here? I've barely shown up in this story at all. Anyway, back to the case at hand. First, we'll have to summarize the events leading up to this point. Junko's murder. My client, Gold Dust, is innocent. We haven't even formally accused him yet! Either way, the evidence is stacked against him. It doesn't matter, for I will overcome the odds and prove that he's not the one. Hey! You're stealing my gimmick! What? I don't even know what your gimmick is. It's like... some kind of heroic... rapper marine? Yo, Triple H. What the hell is my gimmick? You're just someone we milk to make money off kids. 
So, he's like a cow? Damn, speaking of cow, I'm hungry. Can we eat the killer? Black killer? I prefer something cooked medium rare. Uh, no, no, no! I'm the one that gets to do the cooking! I mean, executing around here! Oh my god. Can we just start the trial already? Sure thing. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Ooh, I like that! The Honorable Monokuma! <laughs> Let the trial begin! First, there's a matter of the crime scene. Well, I found Junko's body in the parking lot. So? I find bodies in the parking lot all the time. Doesn't mean they were murdered. Yeah, sometimes I sleep there after getting pizza from the pizza truck. After eating one of those, you're gonna feel like you did. We have a pizza truck? So maybe the girl was just a sleepy victim of delicious pizza. If there was a murder, there'd be blood at the crime scene. No, that's wrong. There's clearly a pool of blood under Junko's body. Blood? I guess she fainted? What blood? I don't see any blood. Are you blind? It's right here. Oh my god, you guys spilled pink paint all over the parking lot too? Would you listen already? We bleed pink for some reason. What? That doesn't make sense. Yes, it's true. Do you want to see some color right now? Someone had me a razor blade. See? Look at all that juice. Ugh, gross. Who are you, Ric Flair? I'm also subject to anime censorship laws and bleed pink. No, you don't. Shut up. We're rated PG here. We just make the footage black and white. But I guess we can show pink blood on the WWE Network, which you can subscribe to for only $9.99. So, fine, there was a murder. So who did it? Just confess right now so we can get on with the show. That'd be best for business. I did it. I'm the champion! No, you didn't! A heel turn is bad for business! Settle down, Hunter. John Cena didn't do it. According to the evidence, the most likely suspect is... Goldust. What? I don't believe this. Show me this evidence. Fine. Have it your way. I'm sorry, Cody. Miss Sykes, it's your turn to shine like the brilliant star that you are. Lay waste to this oncoming asteroid of familiar persecution. Don't worry, Mr. Stardust. I'll do my best. While investigating the murder scene, we found something on Junko's shoe. It was paint, wasn't it? And the color of the paint is a damning piece of evidence. It looks like his face paint! Are you talking about... Gold... Dust? First pink, now yellow, huh? Stop playing with your finger paints backstage! Objection! Let me see that paint. What? Are you thinking I forged this? Where I come from, prosecutors do it all the time. I am not a prosecutor. I'm a detective. Whoa! Spoilers, Kirigiri! A detective, huh? Where I'm from, that profession doesn't particularly go hand in hand with competence. What? I'm not just any ordinary detective. I'll have you know, I'm the super high school level detective. Uh, what? You can't just put a bunch of random words together like that! You just made all that up! Ugh. Fine. Here. Hmm, this taste. 
Wait, is she licking the paint? Just as I thought. This isn't paint. It's mustard! Mustard? Oh, yeah. I guess mustard will make shoes taste better. Can't believe I never thought of that. Why would there be mustard on this woman's shoe? Says the person who doesn't even wear shoes. It doesn't matter. The mustard has no connection to my client. Unless he uses mustard to paint his face. Nope. I'm pretty sure I just use, you know, face paint. Because it's paint. For my face. My face isn't a sandwich. As far as I know. Wow. How could you not tell it was mustard, Kiriyuri? I don't go around licking dead people's shoes, Asahina. Is that when you lick people's shoes while they're still alive? How shameful. I have thousands of fans in the WWE universe that would love to lick my shoes. Brilliant new merch idea. John Cena flavored shoes to be made available on WWEshop.com. Do you have any other condiments to pin on my brother, Miss Purple Hair? I keep telling you guys, my hair is silver. And yes. We do have another piece of evidence linking the murder to Goldust. Let me guess. Barbecue sauce? Like good old JR's barbecue sauce? Also available on WWEshop.com. No, it has nothing to do with food. Damn. Wasn't there something in Junko's hand? Was it a cheeseburger? Oh, I prefer a donut. I checked Junko's pockets. She didn't have any donuts. She didn't have a cheeseburger. It wasn't any of those things. She was holding Goldust's blonde wig. Objection! That wig, that isn't mine. What? Who else in the WWE has a long blonde wig other than you? Well, I mean, I used to wear one. But that's an outdated gimmick. I now wear a sweet hoodie to the ring, like my brother Cody used to wear. Hoodies are so passe. Shiny black jumpsuits are much more suited for exploring the cosmos. Huh. So, Kiri Kiri really is losing it. Uh, I guess Makoto was the real brains all along. Didn't Makoto wear a hoodie? Yeah. What a loser. Yet you're the loser here with the faulty evidence. Damn, Kira Kira's dissing on her old boyfriend and her new boyfriend's dissing on her. Oh my god. Whatever. My hand isn't empty yet. There's one more piece of evidence pointing towards your brother, Cody. Oh? And what useless space junk are you going to send into orbits this time? Take that! Ugh! Now she is stealing my gimmick! I present our eyewitness testimony. The attacker was wearing an eye patch on his left eye. There are only two people here wearing eye patches, and only one of them has it on his left eye. Mine is definitely on the right. I lost my right eye to Dan Hibiki's father, uh, I think. So who's the one wearing an eye patch on their left eye? That would be you. Oh. I guess you're right. So you admit it. Yes, I admit to wearing an eye patch on my left eye. I mean about killing Junko. What? No, I didn't do that. The testimony clearly states that the killer wore the eye patch on the left eye. You must be the killer. Hold it. Could you repeat that in a non-stop debate? What? Why? Because the presentation just intrigues me. Shooting metaphorical bullets at your opponent to reveal the truth. Much more exciting than simply pointing at people. Okay, fine. Goldust must be the killer. 
The killer wore the eye patch on the left eye. There's no room for any doubt. If the witness saw the killer's reflection. Uh, reflection? Let's say the attacker was someone wearing an eye patch on their right eye. What if the witness saw the attacker in a mirror? The eye patch would only appear to be on the left while actually being on the right. But where would there be a mirror in a parking lot? Right here. The broken car mirror. I understand now. Right! There was obviously a struggle near this car. Look at all this broken glass! The car window is broken and there are even traces of blood. The killer attacked Junko near this car. The witness saw the killer's reflection in the mirror, mistaking which eye the eye patch was actually on. But who would be able to see the killer's reflection in the car mirror? Who is the witness? It could only be the one with a clear view of the car mirror. Which could only be... Junko and Oshima. Junko and Oshima?! That's crazy! Even to someone like me! Where's your evidence? Just look at this truth bullet card. Don't you see the silhouette on the card? This is clearly Junko and Oshima. That's... that can't be right. That's could probably just some generic silhouette. Generic? Look at that hair! That's anime! Precisely. This anime hairstyle is unmistakably Jinko's. Maybe they just needed some branding on there to associate it with Danganronpa. I don't think so. If they wanted branding, they would have just used the series mascot, Monokuma. <laughs> That's right! There certainly is a lot of Monokuma merchandise out there. And a lot of it is bootleg! Only buy official merch! <laughs> but anyway, I would have put myself on that card if I felt it was appropriate. Wait, you're the one that makes these evidence cards? The proper term is Truth Bullet! And yes, I designed them myself! Monokuma specifically chose Junko's silhouette because Junko is the origin of this quote. Wait, isn't Junko the victim here? How could she provide witness testimony on her own murder? Is it because the victim of this murder isn't Junko Enoshima? Hold it! Let me stop you right there! We're here for the trial of the murder of Junko Enoshima! Junko Enoshima is the victim here! To think any different would be ridiculous! None of that Vince Russo level swerve stuff here! But yes! The identity of the witness is right there on the Truth Bullet card. However, maybe she did make a tiny mistake about which eye the eye patch was on. So, you confirm the witness is female? Whoops! Anyway, hand me that Truth Bullet card. I'll fix it for you. There! Now the card is 100% accurate! Hey, you just scribbled on it with marker! Wait, the anime Junko girl is still on here. There's no way someone could be a witness to their own murder and live to tell the tale. Who cares? If Monokuma says the testimony is accurate, then we'll just go with it. It doesn't matter who said it. So, if the killer is really someone whose eye patch is on the right eye, it can only mean... You're suspecting me, aren't you? You're the only one with an eye patch on the right eye! And you lost your eye to Hibiki of all people! How did you lose that fight? Go Hibiki probably puts up a good fight. But I ended up killing him in that battle. So you've killed before! And Junko, or whoever this person was, was another victim to add to the list! I did not kill this woman. I bet my bison bucks on it. I only attacked her, but I did not kill her. Attacked her? Ha! <laughs> Earlier you accused me of murder, then act surprised when I admit to an attack! Settle down, girl, settle down. Maybe have a snack. You like some cornflakes? <laughs> I'm 
I did attack someone in the parking lot tonight. I smashed their head into the car window. Pretty cool, huh? Why'd you attack Junko? I was under contract by Monokuma to kill this girl, but I failed. She escaped before I could land a tiger uppercut! Murder or not, you made a disgusting mess backstage. An unforgivable crime! But at least the crime was limited to just the parking lot. Actually, there is another place you might have to worry about mopping up. You've got to be kidding me! There's a blood trail leading from the victim's body. The nature of the streaks on the ground indicate the body was dragged along the ground. The trail ended up leading to a room that Triple H had locked to prevent our investigation. It was a dressing room. Damn! Someone had a pink lemonade Kool-Aid party in there. Why wasn't I invited? We've already gone over this. It's blood. This cleaning bill's going to cost a fortune. We need new merch ideas. Monokuma, let's talk licensing. How do you feel about an MWO Monokuma World Order shirt? I can't see anyone buying one of those. I believe deducing the true scene of the crime will lead us to the real killer. The real killer? So, it's not Sagat? Sagat may have attacked Junko in the parking lot, but the parking lot is not where Junko was killed. So, you're saying that maybe the dressing room is where the dying star Junko made her supernova exit from this dimension? Yes. The dressing room is truly where stars are born and where they go to die. Please stop speaking like that. It's annoying. Stop bickering, you guys! Fine! I'll end this lover's quarrel and take over from here. We stole Triple H's sweaty crotch key. Wait, you took that key from my tights? Actually, it was me. That's horrifying. What's horrifying was the scene in the dressing room. So much blood. It was a true scene of the murder. Someone tried to hide the evidence. The true killer. Triple H! No, that's wrong. As much as we'd love it to be true, Triple H isn't the killer either. What? But he was interfering with the investigation! He locked the dressing room door so he wouldn't discover the true crime scene! No, I locked the door up to keep you kids from dirtying up the place. But I guess the sanctity of the dressing room had already been violated. What a mess. This mess is what will reveal the killer's identity. What? How? I knew it. It was the Kool-Aid man. You don't spill his contents all over the carpet. Oh yeah! Right! My focus isn't on the carpet. It's on the wall. Take a look at this. Bloody writing! I'm very familiar with this type of evidence. This bloody writing on the wall. We've seen something like this before, too. It's a message from the victim to help us identify her murderer. Are you sure? Where I'm from, this kind of thing is usually pretty misleading. It is misleading, but in the dumbest way possible. Only an idiot wouldn't be able to understand it. Greater than one, close parentheses, zero, Z1, E1. I don't get it. Is that some sort of code? It's an encrypted message! Radio waves sent out into the universe in an effort to communicate with those beyond our solar system! It's a combination to Triple H's secret pizza safe. That's what he's trying to hide by locking the room. No, that combination is 11037. I mean, wait, damn it! Oh yeah, I got me some pizza in my new feature. You stay away from my pizza! <sighs> you idiots. You're just as useless as a classmate at Hope's Peak. It's not some sort of code. Use your brains. Shift your perspective. 
B R O C K Brock? Brock! No! How could our president betray us? Brock! You mean that Pokemon fellow with the squinty eyes? You know, with the Geo dudes and stuff. Seriously? Someone from Pokemon? Hold it! Before we start talking about Pokemon, I'd like to bring something up that we kind of glossed over. Outside of the dressing room, there was this piece of paper on the ground, soaked in the victim's blood. What is it? It's a receipt for a sandwich. One order of a totally tuna. Mark Henry, you're a food expert, right? Tell me, what is the origin of this sandwich? Oh man, I'm not really a fan of it, but I can tell you that their sandwich is from Jimmy John's. Ugh, Jimmy John's. That's not exactly a sports entertainment eatery. That's it! That's the final piece of the puzzle! Now all I have to do is put it all together using logic. Okay, Athena. Now's your chance to show them that stupid mini-games are no match for logic when it comes to uncovering the truth. We've got to link this murder to a Brock that makes sense, not some stupid Pokemon trainer. What evidence do we have to work with? Wait, wasn't there something on the body that didn't have an explanation? Right, there was mustard on the body. But why? What's up with mustard? Oh yeah! Mustard doesn't just make shoes taste better, but also sandwiches! Wait, the sandwich shop receipt! Could it be related? The source of the sandwich? That's it! The killer was eating a sandwich from Jimmy John's! But how does that help? Who in the WWE would be eating from Jimmy John's? They would need a compelling reason to eat from there. Oh my god! This... this is it? I know who the killer is! I've got it! Mark Henry, the world's strongest and hungriest man, has just helped solve the case! It'll get it, we got him in. Earlier on, we found mustard on Junko's body. There was no explanation as to why it was there. But I've deduced that it came from a totally tuna. That's a sandwich from Jimmy John's, correct? Does that mean the killer was eating the sandwich when he murdered Junko? Precisely. And Triple H said it himself. Pretty much no one in the WWE is a fan of the restaurant, so why would someone in this arena be eating that? You'd have to force me to eat that stuff. Right! Forced! By a sponsor! A... Uh, sponsor? From this evidence, I have concluded that our killer is sponsored by Jimmy John's. He probably has a logo right on his wrestling trunks. Sponsored by Jimmy John's? We don't really let wrestlers accept sponsorships. Just ask CM Punk, except... Wait a minute. Oh, no. Yep, that means the Brock the bloody writing refers to is... Brock Lesnar! Wait, how did you come up with all this? Simple, pure logic. Logic? You didn't, like, go snowboard in Tron World or something? Nope. You didn't play Hangman or a dumb rhythm minigame? Nah. -uh. Damn. I wish we had thought of thinking. Let's get back on track. You're accusing Brock Lesnar, the current WWE champion? That's right. When you think of Brock Lesnar, you immediately think of three things. One, he looks like a giant baby. Two, that dumb sore tattoo. And three, that awful Jimmy Jones logo on his trunks due to his sponsorship. So, you guys see it, right? The one who killed Junko was... The one who only seeks to eat, sleep, conquer, and repeat. 
The Beast Incarnate. The mayor of Suplex City. Thank you, Athena. With your help, I finally understand. Here's exactly what happened. Upset that she wasn't getting the push she deserved, Junko aimlessly wandered the parking lot. She was invading the habitat of a backstage wrestler's natural predator, the unmarked Lincoln Town car. The would-be vehicular assassin was Sagat, under contract from Monokuma to terminate Jinko. Iger! Iger! Sagat continued his assault outside of the vehicle, smashing Jinko's head into a nearby car window. Sagat was unable to finish the job, as Junko had escaped to the dressing room. There she met the killer, eating a sandwich from Jimmy John's, as Athena had observed on the receipt left outside the doorway. Upset about his interrupted lunch, the killer and Junko got into an altercation, which immediately became physical. The killer viciously murdered her, as this particular individual tends to do with his opponents. His MO indicates the utilization of at least 16 German suplexes. A misguided attack. Perhaps, as the ones who truly deserve punishment are Yukes for making such a busted wrestling game. In her final breaths, Junko left a dying message on the dressing room wall to out her killer. However, she wrote it all weird for some reason, probably due to brain damage suffered during the attack. The killer then dragged Junko's body out into the parking lot, which is where he finished burying Junko. The entire time, the killer refused to let go of his precious sandwich, leaving behind a final clue on Junko's shoe, mustard from his Jimmy John sandwich. And only one WWE superstar has an association with Jimmy John's. Brock Lesnar! I knew it! My brother is innocent. Curse Lesnar and his foul tendency to destroy all that lay in his path! He's like a walking Death Star. That looks like a giant baby. I agree. He does look like a giant baby. Oh, and also, he's the killer. I know how vicious he can be firsthand. Suplet City is a nasty place. So it's settled then. The evidence points towards Brock Lesnar as the one who murdered Junko Enoshima. It seems to be an accurate conclusion. Good job, Kirigiri! I believe the praise should be directed at Athena for saving my... Sweet... Golden... Ass. Only Brock Lesnar could have killed in such an unceremonious way. How shameful. As long as I am not the one to blame, this is a sufficient outcome. Sounds good. Let's see. Monokuma, I think we're ready to cast our votes. How's Heyman going to talk Brock out of this mess? Funny you should mention that, Trips. Was that? You'll notice that Brock Lesnar is not a part of this trial. Yeah, so? Well, it's only fair that we have someone represent him, so... Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Heyman, and I am here on behalf of my client, Brock Lesnar! Oh boy. Who the heck is this? That's Paul Heyman, the former owner of ECW and Brock Lesnar's manager. The swimmer girl is right. I am a legend, and here to defend the good name of Brock Lesnar! Your client is a killer. 
Yes, Brock Lesnar is a monster! The Beast Incarnate! He can and will conquer all! Anything that stands in his way will fall! Be it The Undertaker, John Cena, Roman Reigns, or a Japanese schoolgirl who thinks she can spread despair among the weak! Brock Lesnar is not among the weak! Brock Lesnar has conquered despair! And a little class trial will not be the end of him! No, for you see, Brock Lesnar cannot become the punished! For he is the Punisher! Your puny little votes will not be able to touch him! What are you saying? That's not how these trials work. Maybe in your little Japanese high school, your hopes peak, or rather, hopes leftovers, these sorts of affairs would scare you children. But for Brock Lesnar, there is nothing to fear! We are in the universe of the WWE! And even Monokuma must follow certain contractual obligations. Contractual obligations? You see, unfortunately, Brock Lesnar is only a part-timer. The WWE pays him millions of dollars just to show up for a few nights a year. Yes, the WWE are as stupid as they sound. But a contract is a contract. Therefore, as a part-timer, he cannot officially participate in our little killing game. Then why are we even having this trial? Oh, I was just getting kind of bored of wrestling. This is Monday Night Raw, after all. We've got to fill time with long-winded vignettes. A murder occurred, and that was a perfect excuse to break up the pace with a trial. Who booked this crap? Don't look at me. But the one who killed Junko, you're saying that he can't be punished? Does that mean the trial is over? No, 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 no! Someone needs to be punished! It's tradition! It just can't be Brock Lesnar. Then who is the one to be punished? Isn't it obvious? The person most responsible for Junko's death, outside of Brock Lesnar. But none of us even touched her! Except... No. That's right. Before Lesnar did the deed, Sagat was the one who attacked her. But I did not kill that girl! What does it matter? You were trying to kill her anyway. I bet you were the one who tried to frame me, too! Anyone seeking to blot out the shining galaxy that is the Rhodes family is surely a criminal. It's true. Even if Sagat was not the one ultimately responsible for Junko's death, he still had the malice to contribute to it. Can't you see? Are you people blind in both eyes? You are playing right into the hands of the bear! Wasn't you just one of Monokuma's stooges? Aha! Exactly! If anyone is to blame, it is Monokuma! I was simply a tool! Really? A tool? You're going to use that as an excuse? Where have I heard this before? Yes, a tool. Monokuma was on point. I merely provided the assist, like Dr. Doom and his hidden missiles. The only missile I know is a dog. Sagat, no one likes a coward. While Monokuma isn't blameless, I'll prove that you are the one responsible for Junko's death. I'm about to pull a happy birthday for your whole team. So, you think I am responsible for killing the girl? Don't make me laugh. I merely injured her. She was well enough to escape my attack. I did not kill her. Hold it! Why did you attack her anyway? That's a pretty hostile gesture. We've already gone over this. I am a mercenary. Shadaloo sent me to work for Monokuma, and I do what Monokuma asks. So, Monokuma asked you to kill Junko? Yes, we had a contract. I was to receive compensation for completing his task. Objection! But you didn't complete the task! Brock Lesnar was the one to kill Junko. Exactly! Wait! Dang it! That's going in a Pachamania video! My, you are a marvelous defense attorney. 
You are certainly doing a good job defending me. Should I split my earnings with you? No! Keep your blood money! Hold it! Holler! If you hear me! I know who did it. Someone hand me a freaking mic. Uh, just ignore her. Wait, wait, wait. This little girl finally has something to say. I say we let her talk. I'm not sure if that would be the best idea. Yeah, man, you guys don't gotta bear like that. Let her do her thing. All right, little missy. You had something to say? That's right, because I'm the man with the Big Dipper, and satisfaction is coming when I go behind and do the bump and grind, and it's only a matter of time, because they call me the Big Bad Booty Daddy. Uh-oh. What have I done? You know, they say all men are created equal. But when you look at Sagat, and you look at Brock Lesnar, and you can see that statement is not true. Normally, I would say that between the two possible killers, each has a 50-50 chance of killing Junko. But Brock Lesnar is just a part-timer, and that's not normal. So thanks to his contract, Brock had a 25% chance of killing someone. Then you add Junko to the mix, who probably fought back. And Brock's chances of killing Drastic go down. So then it becomes a three-way. So in a three-way, you've got a 33 and a third chance of killing. But Sagat has a 66 and two-thirds chance of winning because Junko knows she can't beat Brock. And she's not even gonna try. So we take Brock's 33 and a third chance minus Sagat's 25% chance. And Brock has an eight and a third chance of killing. But then you take Sagat's 75% chance, if he was still one-on-one. -on -one, and then add a 66 and two-thirds chance, Percent. Sagat has a 141 and two-thirds chance of killing. So, Senor Sagat, the numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you. Achoo! What just happened? And this is why we don't let her talk. You right, sorry about that. Let's pick that shovel back up. Wait, you guys are just going back to ignoring me? Anyway. Sagat, you won't have any way to spend your blood money when we're through with you. What? You suspect me too, purple hair? Again with the purple hair? Seriously, guys, it's getting old. Now, Sagat, please continue with your testimony. Monokuma is the one to blame! I was contracted by the bear! Hold it! Contract business again, huh? Do you happen to have a copy of this contract? Yes, I have it right here. You want it? Catch! Tiger shot! Whoa! Hey! Calm down! I just want to read it. What does it say, Athena? Shadow Lu operative Sagat is hereby assigned with the termination of the subject Junko Enoshima. Upon termination of the subject, Sagat is to be compensated by 10 million dollars? That's a lot of moolah! That's almost as much as we pay Brock Lesnar for a single appearance. You kidding me, right? Let me see that contract. Oh, sure thing, Kitty Giddy. Athena! was unnecessary, but thank you. Hmm, ten million dollars. That is indeed a lot of money. A shame you'll never see any of it. What was that? You didn't kill Junko, right? So I guess that makes your reward null and void. I, uh, yes, that is a shame. Wait, so you don't even have the money? And you said you were going to split it with me for defending you! I thought you said you didn't want his blood money. That was before I knew it was ten million dollars! Don't even think about it, Athena. Sagat, please add the details of your contract and lack of compensation to your testimony. Uh, right, uh, of course. I was contracted by Monokuma to assassinate Junko Enoshiba. Once Junko was terminated, I was to receive ten million dollars. Despite my best efforts, I was unable to complete the contract. Because I did not kill the girl, 
I did not receive any of the money. Objection. I guess with that eye patch on, it must be difficult to read the fine print. Fine print? You say you're not eligible to receive your money from Monokuma, right? Yes, that is correct. Not according to your contract. <laughs> it says right here in the final paragraph. If the subject expires by any other means, Sagat accepts full responsibility and compensation. Sagat accepts responsibility? That means... Sagat is responsible for Junko's death. Contractually speaking, yes. No! This cannot be! <laughs> what a brilliant ploy, Sagat. Knowing that Monokuma's killing game would force Junko's death eventually, this contract guarantees you a reward. The killer could have been anyone. It could have been you, it could have been me, or any one of the WWE superstars. No matter who killed her, you would have gotten your $10 million. An excellent option select. That's... that's not... No! What if I give the money back? I don't accept it! No! No gift backsies! A contract is a contract! Like Brock Lesnar's, I have to honor yours as well! You must have done some brilliant negotiating to get a sweet deal like that, Sagat. Too bad it ended up like this. Oh no! The contract was 100% under my terms! Sagat did not offer any say. You willingly gave him such a lenient contract? Indeed! Of course, I kinda thought something like this would happen. So, it all worked out in the end! Damn, I couldn't have buried someone better myself. I must admit I'm impressed. Good job, Monokuma. You despicable bear! Reducing me to mere jobber status! Jobbers still get paid, right? Did you even check to make sure the money was all there? You dirty! If you underpaid me... What? What is this? Monokuma dollars! Is this a joke? This money isn't worth the paper it's printed on! On the contrary! Every Monokuma dollar will be worth five British pounds! And that is the exchange rate the Bank of England will set once I have kidnapped their queen! You were going to kidnap the Queen of England? Now, it's the moment we've all been waiting for! It's time to vote! If you would, please locate your lever and cast your vote! And when the votes are tallied, who will become the Blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? spectacular class trial! Yes, indeed! It is Sagat who is responsible for the death of Junko Enoshima! Outside of Brock Lesnar, of course! How awful! Sagat is clearly a man of anime influence, yet he has done such a despicable deed! He was unable to rise above hate! I was just doing my job! Curse Bison for lending me out to work for this bear! Face it, Sagat. You're just a thug. A thug? My, how you underestimate me. Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment for the King of Muay Thai. Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! <laughs> Round one, fight!
a big jerk, but did he really deserve to die? Junko's true killer remains free. Actually, I'm still troubled by something else. So, Junko is actually dead, but she's supposed to be the mastermind. What are you talking about? The eyewitness. We never found out who it was. Do you still think it was Junko? She couldn't have been alive to give out a testimony like that. The truth bullet card. The silhouette. No, I was thinking about this all wrong. Junko wasn't the eyewitness. It was Mukuro. Mukuro Ikusaba, the 16th student. Wait a minute. In all the constellations I've observed from the heavens above, I've never saw anything about a 16th student. Huh? There are only ten of us on trial here, plus the lawyer and Monokuma. Where are you getting sixteen? Actually, eleven or twelve, if you count Fukawa. Oh, I don't count her. The sixteenth student in her class at Hope's Peak Academy, I mean. The ultimate soldier, Mukuro Ikusaba. What? You can't see me? I'm the ultimate soldier! John Cena, the Marine! Didn't the Miz take over as a Marine? The Miz? He's basically the Fukawa of the WWE! I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. Junko has a twin sister. What? How did you know this? Because I survived the end of Danganronpa. Well, I guess you did too, Asahina. And Fukawa, also. What about me? At the end of the game, Jinko revealed that her twin sister, Mukuro Ikusaba, was masquerading as Jinko during her first few days at Hope's Peak. It seems that Jinko wasn't the only one to cross over into the WWE universe. Mukuro came along for the ride. Again, how come I'm the only one that remembers any of this? And why are you alive, Sakura? Did Monokuma do some stupid Ultra Memories thing again? Going with that plot device for a second time is kind of annoying. I'm afraid I don't follow. None of this makes sense. Sakura should be dead. Jinko should be the mastermind. And Mukuro... Oh, kitty kitty. You think way too much. Junko? She's alive? Man! What a swerve! Hi! Hello! That... That can't be Junko. She's... Mukuro Ikusaba? Really? You're surprised? I'm surprised you're surprised. You should be used to this sort of thing by now. Danganronpa, it's all about subverting your expectations. So you were the eyewitness. Yes, it's me, Kitty Kitty. It was me all along. But Junko was the one that saw Sagat in that mirror. How were you able to see? Fine, I'll confess. I was the one Sagat attacked. A hired gun betraying the one who hired him. A disgrace of a mercenary. Of course, he thought I was Junko, but hey, the real Junko died anyway. And he signed the contract. His guilty verdict still stands. Besides, I can't let Brock Lesnar die just yet. I've got plans for him. I... I, I don't understand. 
Oh, that's not surprising. You're not the same kitty kitty we've all come to know and love. You're definitely not as smart as her. What is this nonsense? You were outsmarted. By Brock Lesnar, by Athena, and even by me. You bought that stupid wig hook line and sinker. You've ruined your friendship with Cody chasing a false culprit. Our kitty kitty is smarter than that, but unfortunately, you're not her. She's not the real Kirigiri? Another swerve! What the heck is going on here? What is this alien specter screeching about? Asahina, Sakura, I can't believe you never noticed. Some kind of friends you are. But I guess Kitty Kitty spent too much time snooping around in the second floor boys' bathroom instead of doing free time events like Makoto. I know your Kitty Kitty was kind of a bitch, but this Kitty Kitty, she's way too emotional. She's been acting wildly out of character. Kitty Kitty's supposed to be calm and stoic, observant and intelligent. But here she's being short-tempered, getting possessed by ghosts, missing obvious clues and falling in love with Cody Rhodes. I do not have a thing for Cody. Who the heck keeps shipping us? And see, look at that. Breaking the fourth wall. How does this kitty kitty know so much about what happens at Danganronpa when this Sakura and Asahina have yet to experience the end of that story? It's because this kitty kitty isn't from that Danganronpa. This story, Dangan Wrestling, is obviously a crossover story. The melding of multiple fictions into one. The characters from one universe meet characters from another. Right. This is WWE Cross Dinkin Rampa. Except you, Giddy Giddy, are not from either. What are you talking about? Look at me. I'm Kyoko Kitty Giddy of Dangan Rampa Trigger Happy Havoc. There's no mistaking it. No, Kitty Giddy. You are from Dangan Rampa. Two words. Not one. Two words? What the hell? What is this Vince Russo nonsense? Too many goddamn twists! Yes, this kitty kitty knows oh so much about the events of Danganronpa before you guys because she's from Danganronpa. The fair translation that came before Miss America's official English release. Yes, this is a glorious momentous occasion. I'm sure you noticed it by now. It was not only two universes to collide, but many! Danganronpa, WWE, Persona, Street Fighter, Ace Attorney, your Danganronpa, and perhaps many more to come. And me? I am Mikuru Ikusaba. And in my new universe, I am the surviving sister. Now, it's time to get out of this ridiculous getup. Enough of this visual novel crap. Let's get back to wrestling! I mourn the passing of my dear sister Junko, but here, in the WWE, Ultimate Despair will be reborn! I present to you my newly adopted sister of despair, Brock Lesnar! I've finally gotten through! Danganronpa, friend. I know things are looking bleak, but fear not! I've been doing some networking within the WWE. I helped Sting put together those silly video packages for WrestleMania 31. I helped Solomon Crow hack NXT. I even taught Kevin Nash how to send a text to himself about tearing his quad. And thanks to my connections within the company, someone is coming. Someone is coming to save us! He may be a bit fickle, a bit of a show, and the host of a podcast of questionable quality, but you can ultimately trust him. I'm sending him over now. The transmission is starting. Please fight, friends!
I know I said I wasn't going to make any live television appearances, but this is important. I, Chris Jericho, am here to break the walls down between anime and pro wrestling. Don't worry, dang it, Rumpa Crew. I am here to save us from despair. Thanks to your friend Alter Ego and the good folks at Onnit, DraftKings.com, and DDP Yoga, I have access to an anime army, and with their help, our combined hope will overcome the ultimate despair. Then, after I've saved you all, you guys can all come on my podcast and talk to me about anime. Now, from a mystical island, these folks share in your despair. Together, we will fight Monokuma and take back Monday Night Raw! Thank <laughs> you. 